675 pounds. I can remember a couple of years ago, he had to eat a lot of bananas and drink a lot of water just to get up to 150. <laughs> well, if you watch him when he hits, he really coils the body. Sometimes people say he's going to hurt his arm. But you get tricked. If you don't watch him carefully, you don't realize that he turns his upper body more than the conventional player. We'd like to welcome all of the viewers watching the First Bank Tennis Tournament. One more time to tell us here is Mary Jo Fernandez. Tell us on that match, 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. So we welcome you all to the Great Western Forum here in the middle of April as we hope you enjoy McEnroe and Agassiz as they prepare to battle it out tonight. McEnroe was born in Wiesbaden, Germany when his father was in the Air Force, now resides in Malibu. And he just turned 34 on the 16th of February. Well, 34 and getting better all the time. I watched him in some of the warm-ups, and the guy can just nail that thing. He does so many things to the ball that people no, don't normally see. When you start to coach, he's a hard guy to coach because he's got shots that you don't normally see in tennis. He knows the value of the strings. He'll just stick the racket out. He's one of the few guys, I've got a new book coming out, and he's one of the few guys that I mentioned that can take a half volley at his feet and put the ball away. McEnroe and Agassi have played one another in tournament competition four times. They're even, so how do you rate this match? Well, I don't know if I'm going to be right or not, but I've been awfully lucky for about three years now. To the forehand goes Agassi. To the backhand goes Agassi. On the serve, I call it even. On the return, I call it even. Foot speed goes to Agassi. Net play goes to McEnroe. And intangibles, here it is, folks. McEnroe. Meaning 12 more years of experience, perhaps. You bet. And also, the kind of guy that can be way down, but come back and win. Okay, we're getting ready to start it off here at the Great Western Forum. McEnroe, Agassi, one more time. Serves, and in just a few seconds, we'll get this one underway. Our chair umpire tonight is John Bramlett from San Berdu, San Bernardino, California. John's been a tennis official of Southern California area and throughout the nation, as a matter of fact, for oh, about a decade now. This will kind of give you a little shock, especially those not earning uh, that amount of money. Yvonne Lindell is the career leader. Now, this is just in tournament play. The exhibitions, the uh, commercial endorsements, all of that is separate. But uh, in tournament play, Lindell with better than 19 mil, Edberg 13 and a half, then Becker with 12.2, and John McEnroe has dropped a fourth at 12.2 million. And number nine, Agassi, 5.4 million. So he can afford that, Jeff. <laughs> and he says he loves it because he can get to and from very fast. He doesn't have to stop at airports and have everybody beg him for his shirts and things. By the way, as you watch him serve there, he is getting much more power. Last year, he uncorked to serve at 100 and 10 miles per hour. Major. I guess the best serve so far this year was about, what, 124? I saw that in uh, one of the releases the other day in the tournament. I think it's Rosette. And the uh, players now are coming very close to 130. Keep in mind, though, that Roscoe Tanner cranked one in at 134. There you see some head to head. First meeting, the McEnroe, the winner. Agassi is a lot older than just 22, but it's because he's been on the circuit for six years and he gets so much publicity, so much play from the media. Well, that happened with Rose Wall and, and uh, the Aussies, and Labor and those guys started on the tour when they were 15, 16, did not go to high school, and they've been playing tennis for many, many years, and people said when they're going to retire, they're still in their 20s. And Agassi will be the first one to tell you that John McEnroe helped him immeasurably last year to win the famed Wimbledon Championship. McEnroe to start the service. And it was Agassi who beat McEnroe in the semifinals. But it's kind of nice to have an old hand, say old hand, just 34 McEnroe, to help a young guy like 22-year-old 
Legacy, telling and tell him about some of the nuances of playing at Wimbledon. And that helped him a great deal. did that originally because he had a bad back and he was trying to get out of having that bad back problem. Oh. Oh. No. He's had two points and two questionable stares by Mr. McEnroe. Well, I think the crowd's trying to get back to set now and see if they can jerk him into a little emotional thing. Won't take much, will it? Max's pretty tough on himself. Always has been. It's a great slice, sir. Something you don't see. Most of the people on the pro tour ranking is a pretty big loss. But Matt knows how to do a change. He knows how to throw a slice. Just when you sit on your heels, he'll throw a change up. He extends that back so much on his service motion, I would think he would be beset by all sorts of back problems. David Wheaton always talks about it. If you don't put that volley away, which is a miss hit, I guess he'll come over and pass you. But the shot was wide, so it's 40-15. Oh! That can't get his rhythm. Not missing by much. You come back after that, you still have to crank up that second. You can't float it. The guy on the other side will pick that up and attack it. in the first game. This is a best of three set affair. The Forum Tennis Challenge. Agassi serving. Love 15. Double fault right off the bat. Boom, just like that. I think it takes a while for all of the players to get adjusted to the lights here. 15 all. Well, when you play in five different cities, different altitudes, different conditions, this is the fifth night, or sixth, I think. Michael and it's uh, got to make some adjustments. He said the fans in Mexico City gave them such an ovation. Mexicans really love their tennis. a session on the speed of the game about a year ago in Florida with the Association of Tennis Professionals. They were very concerned. They said now every player just 
hits the ball so hard. But if you watch McEnroe, he just counter punches. That's all he does, blocks balls. And then he'll topspin the ball suddenly out of nowhere. But I think the people are wrong. It isn't just a slugfest. McEnroe is still out there. So they will punch. Oh, how about that for a cross-court drive, huh? It wasn't that McEnroe off. got passed, but if you take a look at it here, it's how fast. Now look at the reactions McEnroe gets. Very little. He can hardly move. It's going so fast. There's where weight training pays off. You're off balance. You can do a lot if you're strong. Strength helps you more when you're off balance. And that's where strength has played an important role in Agassiz's success last year. <laughs> Fitness coach, Bill Reyes, a friend of his from UNLV, and he helped Agassi put on the weight, but it's not putting on the weight so much as it's putting on muscle on a body that's still developing. Still has a few fans around here. Still has some shots, too. It's this shot he holds so long before he commits. I guess he had no choice. Take a guess. He took the guess. He's holding two. <laughs> a little pixie smile. Oh, for five on first serves in the first game. That's a great stat that Patrick Cooper passed along to us. McEnroe was number one in the world four straight years, 1981, 82. 83 and 84. Offensive lob, which he just lost, and a drop shot, which McEnroe played, which McEnroe lost. So the dads hold up. Oh, come on! Yes. Not going to be too much more of this. That's Peter Knee who made the out call, and Mac is upset. Well, the new courts are going to have electronic lines in them, so all of this stuff will soon end. Are you glad of that? Uh, well, in a way I am now because the money's getting so big that you hate to see a person uh, lose on a disputed call. serve in with a little sauce, mackle it up a little. You do that to Andre, you only salute it. What a shot. Watch it again. Watch him coil the body. 
point makes a fast acceleration with those forearms. That's hard to do. Most people play two hands. You can't make the racket accelerate much. Left first round. You talk about the power in the game today, and I think those new lightweight rackets make a vast difference. Some rackets are on the market today that are under 10 ounces, nine and a half. Fall. Uh oh, look out. I think you're going to hear a little bit here. It sounded like a late call to me. I guess he's calling a let, or is he calling a fall? Now, McEnroe's saying, hey, how about you guys call the match? See, the crowd loves it. I guess this is why they love it. Clearly on the line, this is clearly out. You're doing a terrific job scoring everything up. Keep up the right back to do the same thing. It's 2-1 McEnroe. This is the first set of the tournament here, the Forum Tennis Challenge from the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. Well, story came out this week that perhaps Andre Agassi would get a new coach, none other than John McEnroe. So we put the question to both. And McEnroe, what can he do to improve Andre Agassi's tennis game? Well, he has a, obviously an incredible amount of talent, so hopefully I can just kick it up one level so that he could possibly be the, the best player in the world instead of one of the best. Now, I know John helped you win Wimbledon last year. What more can he coach you? How can he improve your game? Uh, you know, he's been there, and he's, uh, uh, in my opinion, the best player that's ever played, and that's uh, that's that's something it's, uh, in itself that's going to really hopefully rub off on me. And uh, his ability is, as a coach is, remains to be seen, but from what he's done so far, I have no doubt that he's going to add a big, uh, a big piece to the puzzle. And as Agassi has said, in his estimation, Agassi's estimation, McEnroe is the greatest player to ever play the game. And of course, they're good friends, and they even team up and play doubles from time to time. You know, that is an amazing statement. The greatest who's ever played the game. Coming from Andre, that's a real compliment. Huh? Real compliment. Been some pretty big time blows. Oh, yeah. But Fifteen love. The labor. Borg. Two-time Grand Slam winner. Labor. Oh, that. I wonder how he feels when he hears that. Isn't it funny when you saw yeah. McEnroe with that hat on and the jacket and if you saw him on the street, you'd ask him to paint your house. <laughs> you know, you wear the hat like that, you go, my house will get a little rusty. I doubt that he owns a lot of houses. He can hire a lot of painters. Let's keep him comfortable. Somebody's calling the ball now. I don't know who made the call. One came from the stands, but I did see the lines person put the hand up. Here he goes. Close. 40 left.
the tough backhand, and then the great anticipation. Agassi was in the Two right off. spot at the right time. McEnroe concealed the shot, so Mack had to play. He didn't have to rush that when he thought he had the court wide open. Now watch Agassi. He'll take the guess. He says, okay, I hit the shot. It's not a good one, but I'm going to guess. There he goes. He guesses right. Makes it easy. And we are two all in the first set. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. First, I think Mac thought the serve was out, and it is. They have called it out. Mac checking the house. But he understands that you don't have to have much movement with the racket. Now watch his racket. He positions it and leaves it there. He doesn't throw it all over the place. This is favorite shot. 30 love. That can move you around. Mac's not playing any of the majors so far, although I still think he might decide to give it one more shot in September at the U.S. Open. Oh, Since he's from New York City, or we're living out here in Malibu, California now, but there's something about the lure of the U.S. Open that brings the juices flowing in McEnroe and uh, Jimmy Connors. Well, most of the players who have retired have come back. Gonzalez came back three times, apparently. Borg is still trying to get it. Back and roll. Back and roll. Takes a 3-2 lead here in the first set over Andre Agassi. Back and roll. Up 3-2 in this first set. Well, what's the double back now? Matt gets him going in one direction. He does that so beautifully. Agassi, which way am I going to go? <laughs> in one of the exhibitions this past week, I don't know. Columbus, Ohio, or Seattle, but McEnroe did an imitation of Agassi. McEnroe took off his shirt, threw it to the crowd, and then fake taking off his tennis shorts. It bothers sometimes in the big tournaments. Those who all used to be blue. 30, 15. will tell you they understand it, but it drives them wacky. Look, look at this. Throwing that thing in there. If you anticipate well, you pick up a step or two. If you really can move at the net before the player strikes the ball, you can get almost three steps, which will cover the entire court. Game. Okay. I can see. Now we're tied. Three all. First set. Three all. It's always interesting in research when you're trying to find out what the great anticipators are looking at. What data do they use to encode to the brain to say it's going to go this way? We'll talk more about that project in a second. That serve looked wide to me, and I guess it looked wide to Mac. I guess he just throws up his hands. 
Well, you can sit there and tell me with a straight face up what was out. God damn it, you're full of crap. You know that? Chewing on the chair umpire John Bramble. Still have to go back to all the projects we did where the player wasn't as good calling as the line. Long 15. We had objective data there. We actually filmed a thousand frames a second. We actually found how many times we framed the ball from the court. We had a line that drawn a 16-pint inch of a puck apart. And the line people were more effective, more accurate than the players. September, I think he threw, McEnroe threw his racket something like 11 times, whoever was keeping stats on racket throws. Oh, 30. But let's face it, some of the people come out here just to see that. Left. Yes, Meanwhile, the tennis purists are poor. Well, from my side, Michael, it's in, in a big tournament when you do that. Then there's also the opponent on the other side. Now what what right do you have? What does it do to the other person? If it does nothing to them, that's one thing. But if it bothers them, it's another thing. And the rules are quite clear. 15-30. I guess he was late getting over on that series. I threw it in there very nicely. It's an interesting thing about McEnroe. There are only two players I've ever seen who could do this. Pancho Gonzalez and John McEnroe. When they have a little bit of a tantrum, they come back and play better. Most people play worse. Ah! Don't you think Potter's played better too? A little bit, although it hasn't always worked for Jimmy, but he pumped himself up the same way. But at the... Connors used the crowd more. McEnroe, I think, and Gonzalez did it for themselves. Five feet above the playing surface. 
of the ball on a lob ever hits the scoreboard, then the lobber loses the lobby loses the point to his opponent. Deuce. Deuce. When the players play indoor tournaments, they very seldom have that scoreboard down the center. They usually need a minimum clearance of about 38 feet. This one's a little low, but the players, like McEnroe, who played in the form a lot, learn how to use that. They hit on the side. We even had players practice lean it over the scoreboard to see if they could do it once or twice. It has never worked. Not that I've seen. here in the first set. And the ad belongs to John McEnroe. Gives him the game and a 4-3 first set lead over Andre Agassi. Seats, please. Thank you. Some of the fans are still coming into the Great Western Forum, and that's the reason for this bit of a delay. Also, we have new balls in the play after seven games of the first set. First serve. Agassi is currently ranked number seven in the world, his highest ranking ever, number three, November 88. 15 love. <laughs> the ball went about 80 and his grunt went 130. Not very good first serve percentages. Actually, neither player has served well as sporadic. Three long. Even Agassi's going to turn it on. Now, a foot inside the line. That was literally a foot inside the line. Oh, well, wait, you couldn't see it, though. <laughs> you haven't seen one mistake in this match. It's been eight. It was a hopeless facial expression. There. Hey, what can I do? Bramlett said replay the point. Well, if, if Agassi is saying, hey, yes, it's a bad call, you can only do this in this type of a match. You certainly cannot do it in the official turn. I saw him do it once at Indian Wells, and I think you were with me. He was playing the Yannick Noah, and the point went to Noah. Agassi said, my shot, he went up to the PA mic, grabbed it, he said, I think you agree with me, my shot was wide, the point belongs to Noah, Noah won that point, the game, and went on to win the match. That was the poor call by the Fifteen off. The players, if they're going to umpire the game and also play the game, it's a pretty tough position. Can you just see somebody from the Dodgers and Angels go, no, no, no way, it was a strike, it was a strike. disputed calls this early in the evening or in the daytime ever. In the new electronic line calling, 
last year in Winter Nationals. I think there were 58 calls that were questioned by players. It turns out that the machine was more accurate than anyone, but the players did challenge certain calls. Smart play. 1540. Well, look, we get the electronic system universally. Who will Mac argue with? It's tough to argue with a machine. I, I remember when Ely Anastasi, the first one, he got in front of the little box. He said, you're the most stupid little box I've ever seen. There was nobody else to yell at. It seemed so silly. It's right in his nose. It's right up against the box. It sounds like a possible. Game, McEnroe leads five games to three. There's George Mitchell, one of the veteran tennis officials in the Southern California area. A lot of officials do not like to work a McEnroe match because they know it's going to put a lot of pressure on them. And intimidation is the name of the game, too. You can, you will. When we were doing our study on lines people, and they were yelled at, it wasn't that what happened when they were younger. It's the fact that blood pressure, other physiological factors stayed high, stayed irregular, long after the call. That's some serve, I'll tell you. What a kick it had. 15 low. You know, in my opinion, this kind of a match is not an honorable match. When you're getting ready for the French, you really want to have some long points, have to work very hard. Get in the points are ending very, very quickly. Both players miss hitting balls, not serving well, but still exciting points but when the big tournament comes we have to play those long points well Mac won't be at the French Open this year he's always enjoyed playing over in Paris France but as he admits he said I'm winding it down this year the other day. 15, 40. He said, the older I get, the better I used to be. this first set. It's a 5-4 back and row advantage way down there. He played up at Stowe, Vermont. Shocked the world. Came close to beating Lendl. And Lendl was at the peak of his career at that point. Agassi trying to hold serve here to knock this first set at 5. 15 off. Well, there's a macro shot you don't normally see. We did studies on reaction time on individuals getting into their mid 30s. And when they get into 36, 37, they seem to lose about one step.
shots that we showed you right at the top of the show. Full swing on the volley. And he gets in. It's ball is raised. And here it comes. The bolo whip. Mac was there. Watch that shot. Mac was there. He anticipated well, but just too much speed. Game magazine, five ball. That ball had a nice little tail on it. Just ran away from McEnroe. Five five, first set. But he hit it from back at 39 feet and still at 78 feet was able to put the ball away. Very few players in the history of the game have been able to put clean winners away from the baseline. I'm Mike Walden along with Vic Brayton. This is the Great Western Tennis Forum Challenge. Back to throw and I guess. 15 long. the name Tracy Austin for events and then when she's just with her husband she likes to be Mrs. Holt. But it, for most of professional things she'll be Tracy and Austin. Did Tracy tell you when she will next enter a tournament? No she didn't say that uh, but I tell you she was having so much fun. She was so elegant. Was beautiful looking. We've got a couple of matches down at the uh, women's tournament at uh, Charlie Passerell's place, Indian Wells. High Grand Champions. Low 15. Tracy, 30 years old, it's, it's tough to come back. Well, I took that film of her as a little girl. And she's hitting against the backboard. It's the first film that was taken of her. She says she can't remember herself playing until she's about seven. Six or seven. I think she was about three. Fifteen off. And Mac threw that racket into his head. I saw Anastasi do that once. He almost knocked himself out. <laughs> Especially if you don't hit it with the strings, you hit it with the side of the racket. That's smart. Oh. Oh. 30, 15. Crowd kind of quiet right now. They started out and they wanted to see some fireworks. They settle back now. But don't you think, Mike, it's a little bit loose. The points are loose. And yes. The crowd's a little confused because no one can put on the string. They can't put it away. They can't do what they want to do. Well, 30 off. That 
type of shot. It's not a big time tournament shot. Max says, you better get going, kid. If I'm your coach, <laughs> if that kind of shot, I'll be on your rear end all the whole match. I asked both if the deal had been consummated where McEnroe would serve as Agassiz's coach. They both said, no, still some things to be ironed out in negotiations. 30-40. It would appear to be, if not already resolved, close to being resolved. Well, I wonder where Nick Voluntary was in that. He's done so much for Agassiz and McEnroe knows that. I'm sure he'll honor that relationship. Andre was so great to give credit to Nick and all the things Nick has done for him following the Wimbledon the Championship. Big point for Mack, this is to say. Good serve tossed in by Haggis. What are we going to do? Mack and Rowe leading 6 5 in the second. Haggis trying to send it into a tie break. Had the play, just overran it. Advantage, oh. I can see. <laughs> well, the players have shown us some emotion, but they're not too solid. Now, there's a cross court, trying to take a cross court and hit down the line. Very dangerous shot, that angle deflects. You gotta really nail it. You can't punch it. More like he was trying to guide it rather than follow through. You cannot guide a cross court down the line. Ball slips off the right. Game magazine, six all tiebreak. Akimo had a 5-3 lead. Now we go into the tiebreak. Very short swing too. He shortened it right at about Wimbledon time. Oh! Good. She said McEnroe helped him. Courier swing is one of the shortest swings. It's the hardest. And very often people say that's uh, short and get hard. Oh. Two one Agassi. We're here at the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. The Forum Tennis Challenge, Andre Agassi and John McEnroe. First set, we're in the tiebreak. First set has taken almost an hour. speed. By the way, there's a new formula I have to show on video, which is 30 frames per second. And if the person's near the baseline, you can actually do calculations on the ball speed. Three on. <laughs> How about an eye for an eye? Whatever you can do, I can do better. I get a feeling all of 
of a sudden one of them wants this. Mm -hmm. No rest, six points. James goes straight to your corner. Six inches higher than the net from the baseline. Hit it on a horizontal plane. You have to hit the ball between 175 and 212 miles per hour. Six for Agassiz. One more point. All Agassiz needs. Polish off the first set. goes to Andre Agassi over John McEnroe. McEnroe still contemplating Please things that might have happened. He had a 5-3 first set lead, couldn't hold, and Agassi came on to win it 7-6. A 7-4 score of the tiebreaker decided. to air ratio is going to take a beating in this match. Just go back less than a year, actually. 
and winning, and winning the Wimbledon Championship over Iba Isovic. game of the second set. In that decisive uh, Wimbledon championship match over Ivanisevic, because he just didn't like the grass surface. In fact, the first year he played at Wimbledon, he lost in the first round. Well, he returned serve so well. On these stats, you'll see that the serve at 42% for McEnroe has been sporadic. The 42% is not when he wanted all of the shots either. Unforced airs, I think we're being kind tonight. This is one of the be kind nights. where strength is so valuable. Agassi was out of court, reaching. There's where a lot of injuries take place. But if you have strength, you protect those muscles, protect the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, for off balance. a big tournament and get into the semifinals It'll be one of the few tournaments where your student plays the coach. Now what? Every man for himself. Well if he keeps hitting that last shot the way he did, coaching will be a field. Interested that Mac really wants to stay in this game. He's announced his interest to be involved with the Davis Cup. Interested in being a coach? It's a typical kind of approach for great champions. He asked, well, now that you're not playing in tournaments, what do you do? And they say, I go watch tournaments. They stay around the game a long time. Well, they should. Okay, Magazine, two off. Not only did he break McEnroe, broke him in love. I think if you watch Mac, keep your eye on Mac now, right now. Watch, he only gives a slight wiggle. And that's all it took. The ball was going by him so fast. Ooh, he pounds it. Early this week, uh, McEnroe took some shots at Tom Gorman. Of course, McEnroe openly admits he'd like to have that Davis Cup job as coach of the U.S. team. It's going to come back to haunt Mac. Uh, people who think that the Davis Cup stands for, you know, your country and, and proper behavior and things on the court. Mac feels that his tennis should speak for itself and the behavior should not be counted. But that's not how most people feel the Davis Cup. So I'd say that if he becomes the captain of the Davis Cup, he's got a big uphill battle. I asked him tonight if there was anything new about his captaincy of the Davis Cup team, and he said, I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. Nine winners to five for McEnroe, and 5-0 for Agassiz in the second. He's looking up at the big screen on the scoreboard. I, I think his quickness, Agassiz's quickness is sometimes underrated. 
It is, but I think tonight he's been quite slow. But when he wants to move, he can move. And he read that shot. Oh, yeah, that was really And we're only in the third game. Well, what do you see that's noticeably, noticeably absent in McEnroe's game? The fire? What is? He hasn't come to the net. Hardly at all. That's his game. Now, if you stay back for it, the confutants, they have a form of it's an aggression. Agassi rolling right along here in the second set after winning the first 7-6. Connors won 109 career titles. Lindell is second. McEnroe was third with 77. But McEnroe also has 77 doubles titles to his credit. A lot of those with Peter Fleming. All-around player, great volley, under pressure, good hands, doesn't have excessive movements at the net. Little doubles genius. Ball oh! 15. In fact, McEnroe won a title at Wimbledon last year. A lot of people don't remember. Won the men, uh, men's doubles title with Michael Steech. Won the NCAA singles championship his freshman year at Stanford for Dick Gould. Dick's still up there turning out title winners. That's a great McEnroe serve. Can really stretch you out. Remember that... Uh, Doubles championship, he and uh, McEnroe and Steech won uh, last year, beat Grab and uh, Rennenberg. That fifth set went 19-17. Open court, up in there. I guess he wasn't. Fifteen off. There's the great hands of that. Such a tough shot for the average person because they have a lot of racket hit play. Mac just puts the racket where he wants it, points, and lets the ball rebound. you to watch McEnroe serve because coaches always teach the palm down, keep the palm down. McEnroe starts with the palm up. And people always use that as an example. They say, look, I watch the shows. He doesn't do what you say, but watch when he gets right here, right here, there. He turns it back over again. But a lot of people don't see that movement. So they go out and try to copy Mac, but the movement is from the palm up, and then right there he puts it back down. around a little bit. He's having a hard time.
Monroe badly needs this game. He's only a point away from getting it. 7-6 Agassiz in the first. Three love Agassiz lead in the second. in position to me than I've ever seen. Second set. McEnroe serving. He's up 3-2 in the second. Set seven six. 
by winning a 7-4 tiebreaker. And Agassi is up 3-2 here in the second set. However, McEnroe has won the last two. And we're 15 all in the sixth game. Well, you want to count on your serve. Such a big stroke in professional tennis. And he has not been able to do that. And it's not just the fact that he's missing. It's the variety of errors. Five feet long, just barely missing. Which means that he's struggling on that side. Don't mind that if you're making some errors, but you're close. What a year Mac had in 1984. One stretch during that year, he won 42 straight matches. He won Wimbledon, he beat Connors in five sets in 84, won the U.S. Open by beating Wimbledon. Sometimes it's difficult. Things are very close to get the brain can handle it. So Agassi started out by winning three straight in this set. Mac comes right back, winning three in a row. One thing about Agassi, and he's most proud of. In addition to his Wimbledon championship, and that is the fact that he's been in the top ten in the world five straight years. That's outstanding. Keeps it low, but Agassi on the dead run flicks that form, makes the hit, and smiles. Those are fun shots. When you're out of the point, and you win them. two inches behind the line and then move the camera around and take a look. It sure didn't look wide to me. But we could get any call that we wanted from anywhere in the stands. We could say, all right, if you're on this one, you're going to call that in. If you're here, you're going to call it in. That one was tattooed right on the line. Excedrin headache number 47. So is he saying that Matt, that Agassi didn't hit it on the line that it was out? Or was he so angry at himself because Agassi caught the line? What's your guess? My guess is over the call.
as he was running, and McEnroe was running right back. set of circumstances. But overruled. A non called on her. He called the shot out, and that gave the game to, back to Agassi, even though the ball was going back and forth. So Agassi, he's ready to go. McEnroe is going to take a seat. Agassi 7-6 in the first, and he leads 4-3 in the second. Time, let's play. Back on, so I was ready half a minute ago. One player miss a call by three feet. Been a long night for John Grandma. <laughs> Are you getting? He's going to chess. This may be his last match. <laughs> ah, John's been around a long time. He'll be back. Good sir. Good team. 
What an imitation. Watch this. <laughs> well. He's right about wiping it off a little sweat like that. He goes skidding on a shot. Career is over. And all he was involved in was a one-act play. Birthday on 
the 29th of this month versus the 34-year-old McEnroe. Tried to go on with an exclamation point. Just missed. Agassiz had three aces. Look out. Look out. Back with more from the Great Western Forum. It was Agassiz 7-6 and 6-3 over John McEnroe here tonight at the Forum. And Andre Agassi, who will turn 23 on the 29th of April, is standing by with our Vic Brayton. Andre, we're looking now for you at the French Open. Now you're going through these series of exhibitions. How are these things going to help you or hurt you when you get into the French? Well, you know, I have two weeks off here, this week and, and, and the next week. And uh, two weeks of just practicing can sometimes be too much. You know, you want to keep that match play intensity going. So it's a perfect, perfect opportunity for me to take somebody like John, come out here and play an intense few matches, keep that competitive edge. And I think the practice will come in handy now in preparation for the clay. Well, Andre has said that McEnroe is the best player that he's ever seen play the game. That's a pretty big statement pretty big statement look what he's done I mean the guy the guy's full of more talent in one hand than I think anybody that's played for to get away with strokes like that you make anybody in the world play like that and they don't have a chance of playing college level and he makes it work it's a uh, it's just a, it's a it's actually a pleasure to watch it play it's, it's beautiful to watch well you're beautiful to watch it was a fun match we're gonna get back up to Michael Andre thanks very much it's awfully nice to have you back in LA Thank good you. luck to you in the French Thank you. back to Mike and we'll be back with more from the Great Western Forum and the Forum Tennis Challenge. Mac, you've been quoted uh, by Andre as being the best player in the history of the game, and you've got a lot to offer. What would you do for this country if you got a chance to really put it all together? Somebody gave you a free ticket. Well, uh, it's, it's hard to say in a one, one or two minute interview, but... Ideally, I'd like to try to develop some sort of academy in, in the New York area where I could work with kids uh, under the auspices of the USTA, but at this point with all the politics and in in, in within the USTA, I don't know if that's going to happen. And I think if I was captain of guy, guys such as Agassi, Curry, or Sampras in a Davis Cup type of setting, I think I could do more good. But if not, uh, if that doesn't happen, I'll just have to see what develops and see if I can work with... Uh, say a Nike or something and try to get something started. Right, you could start things on your own, could you not? Well, if I, if I, if I don't, you, you try to do it the, the way that uh, you, you supposedly should do it and work within the, the, uh, the USTA and the people that have been involved in tennis, but if they're going to uh, stick to an old, old school, then uh, hopefully I could try to get something started on my own. Well, Mac, Andre's got a little ways to go now. The French is about uh, just a few weeks away. What would you do for him to get him ready? I think that uh, I'd work a little bit with him on uh, on just uh, being a little bit more uh, ready to play in terms of uh, the physical aspect of it. I think that uh, guys like Courier and, and a few other players work harder off, off on and off the court than he does, and he's extremely talented. I think it's like fine-tuning a machine. I mean, he's a great player, and I think that uh, in order to be able to beat a guy like Curry at the French, he needs a little bit more, but uh, you know, those guys are no slouches either. Curry is playing great, Sampras has come on strong, and the, the rest of the crew. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what happens at the French and Wimbledon. It will be interesting, especially, John, if the day comes in when you have to play him and you're his coach. Anyway, we're gonna be back with the wrap-up right after this.